Hi, uh, this is Sarah Payne and this is the first video diary entry for my research into communities for my MSc module in e-learning and digital cultures. Uh, first of all, the community that I've chosen to study is a quilting community. Now, the reason I chose that one was I wanted to look into um, a community that used to exist or a, a kind of project that used to exist as a community project virtually died out towards the end of the last century and then has been almost reborn in the virtual world as a new and different looking community. Um, a quick history of quilting is that it's been known back as far as the Egyptians. They found quilts in tombs. Um, but from sort of about the uh, late 18th, early 19th century, especially in America, it, become a very, it became a very communal um, activity for women. Women would gather together for quilting bees where um, they may spend long periods of time alone um, and there would be any excuse for a party and the excuse would be the quilting bee where they'd all get gathered together and work on a quilt. It might be a quilt for a wedding, it um, may be individual quilts for people but it was a very sociable and social activity that uh, went on around the world of quilting. Now quilting um, from the war years to about the early 70s virtually died out and quilting in that sense, in the quilting bees, basically the community projects disappeared. Um, in the 70s it became a bit more trendy to sort of uh, recycle, so quilting became more popular, but it hasn't really picked up until the virtual and the digital age where people now have access to each other, people who don't normally quilt. Now I am a very, very new quilter. I've worked on half a quilt um, and I actually found it quite difficult to find other people who do these projects um, face to face. So I did go online and I did do a bit of exploring um, and that's where I found out about the online presence for quilting. Now the quilting community that I've actually chosen is uh, quiltinggallery.com and I've chosen that because they have, it, it's run by a, a, one woman in the States um, but they have a very big um, community following. Now if I take you to the page, it's just so I can introduce you to Quilting Gallery. Okay, well this here is the, the, the main entrance, the main entrance of the portal for the gallery and you can see here that it does, it welcomes you just like anything else. Um, they've got areas for a blog which is the Quilting Gallery blog as well as Quilters blog. So it gives you that sense of that you can move through one blog onto the next to the next. Now um, this particular community does have some community statistics which if I just take you to this page we have some statistics here which um, I was actually quite surprised there's nearly three and a half thousand bloggers involved in this community. Now um, that doesn't take into account the number of lurkers that there would be if there were that many bloggers. Um, these bloggers are in 67 countries we can see here and um, all of the American states, Canadian provinces and then obviously further, further locations um, and then there are some blogs for the United Kingdom as well. So if I just click on that, I apologise for the speed of my internet connection. It is rather slow. Um, we will have a list of bloggers that we can access in this country. Um, if I go to the main bloggers page, which will take us to a allow us to search basically for bloggers, we can also see that they have a Facebook page. So if I go to the Facebook page and show you here. I've actually done as Heinz suggested and I'm not a lurker, I am a watcher, but um, there is a quilting blogger, um, a quilting blog presence in Facebook where people can, as you can see here, chat. Now one thing I did notice here is that in community, this particular community, people actually show themselves. They, sh they don't have virtual identities. They, they call themselves by their own name. This lady at the top, for example, which I shall just hide, um, not only gives us a photograph of herself, but gives us her, her full name. 
Um, I found this quite interesting because I I read obviously that Hein work that suggested that virtual ethnography could never be as truly authentic as face to face because as ethnographers we cannot guarantee that what people are telling us is actually the truth um, especially in a situation like Second Life where you don't know what somebody looks like and you don't know their names or anything like that um, it seems to me that in this particular community people do identify themselves they identify themselves by with the names, the photographs, even some of the pages, which I won't go to, to show you uh, photographs of their family and tell you where they live. Um, one of the entries in the uh, Quilting Bloggers Direct was um, actually a project that you can undertake yourself. So if you're interested in projects, a lot of the, the community um, stuff that goes on here is about sharing projects so here is one called scrappy bookmarks and if we were to follow the links through we can actually find on this particular blog a whole list of supplies and um, instructions on how to complete the piece so um, a major element of this particular community is about the free sharing of information they're not precious about their projects anybody completes a project they will share it and what I've also noticed is the um, freedom and the amount of comments that they get from other bloggers uh, positive comments is a very very positive community well that's my um, my introduction to my first um, or my first introduction I should say to my uh, quilters blog um, and I shall speak to you again soon. Good night.